nice to see everybody here today. If you don't know me, and I think just about everyone does, I'm Erin Oots. I'm the uh, facilitator for the Upstate Entrepreneur Ecosystem. We are doing these workshops. Hmm, we're doing about eight of them this year, and they are deep dives into specific topics. We will also be doing our um, kind of just large group meetings. We'll do three of those this year, starting on May 11th. And that will be where we all get together, ecosystem members, our peers that work with entrepreneurs, uh, and we will mix and mingle by Zoom. So that will be May 11th at three o'clock, and you probably already have an email about that. But today uh, we have Kunal Parikh speaking to us and Michael Nail, who is our primary sponsor for all of these great workshops, is going to introduce Kunal. M Michael did a workshop, he will be doing a workshop in May on the 6th as well to talk about the new rules and vaccine rules and all kinds of new rules that are coming down and, uh, and how to, for your employees and how to advise your entrepreneurs and some of those employment law changes and rules. So I'm gonna turn it over to Michael and then he will turn it over to Parikh. So, um, to Kunal, sorry, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. It's, it's good to see you. Um, and I do look forward to speaking with you in May when I told Aaron that I would speak on vaccines and some of the legal impacts um, to your workplace on that about a month ago. Uh, many things have changed since then. So I'm sure that it will continue to change as we approach uh, that May meeting. But I look forward to speaking with you and we'll do our best to navigate through it. Um, as Aaron said, we have Kunal Parikh with us here today. You may recall that he uh, spoke with Earl Gregorich from the Greenville SPDC back in February about the PPP loans, and that was very informative. Um, he's the small business policy advisor for Senator Tim Scott, uh, works on a lot of issues related to small business and tax issues for Senator Scott, and he's here today uh, to give us an update on changes that may be affecting entrepreneurs uh, business owners as it relates to the new administration. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Kanal. Hey everyone, uh, thanks Michael for the introduction. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. Um, so hopefully everyone can see this. Um, just uh, quickly, um, briefly about myself. Um, as Michael and uh, Aaron mentioned, my name is Kunal. I, I work as uh, Senator Scott's um, small business and entrepreneurship uh, policy advisor. So um, we were there during the uh, drafting of the PPP, the idle programs, um, all the various different stimulus bills um, that provided changes or more money to um, PPP or idle, excuse me. Um, so it, it's been uh, quite, uh, quite a crazy few months, um, as, as I'm sure you all are aware. Um, however, I am jealous. I wish I was down in South Carolina also. Um, <laughs> but uh, let, let's get started. Um, so this is just a quick legislative entrepreneurship update. Um, I'd like to start off with um, just a you know quick uh, background about Senator Scott's work in this in this space and some of the things that we're going to be moving to and looking towards uh, down the road with, in the new Biden administration, regardless of uh, party affiliation or anything like that. Just you know what we're all trying to work towards or what we're trying to see, um, and then we'll we'll turn it over to questions. And uh, I'm I'm more than happy to turn this kind of into a a more Q and A session than it is kind of a briefing. Um, this shouldn't take. Uh, my, my presentation shouldn't take too long. I, I'd really like to get to your questions um, because I think that, you know, that that's the most important part here. So um, with that, uh, let's, let's get started. So um, existing legislation. So I think one of the main things that uh, we are extremely proud of right now is our bill, the Next Generation Entrepreneurship Core Act. Um, so essentially that bill kind of takes a look all across the country, because right now what we're really seeing is that there are some hotspots. San Francisco uh, in California, Boston, Massachusetts, we're seeing uh, New York City, um, kind of these, these main hotspots for tech entrepreneurship or different types of entrepreneurship. We want to make sure that this is becoming a little bit more diverse, you know, spreading across the country, right? So there, there's no 
there's no uh, monopoly on good ideas. Good ideas can come from anywhere. So we want to make sure that, you know, someone in South Carolina, whether it's Columbia, Charleston, Greenville, wherever it might be, has the opportunity to also grow their business. So what this legislation would do is that it would create a fellowship program of 320 people across the country, provide them with what we call program support. So this is the equivalent of $120,000 a year, uh, sorry, for two years to essentially live while you build your business. You have to apply for it through the SBA. Um, and once you're accepted into the program, you're considered a next generation entrepreneur fellow. And when you're a fellow, you get access to all different types of support and all different types of help. Um, you know, whether it's uh, looking for technical assistance, marketing assistance, whatever it might be. Um, once you're a fellow, once you're in the program, then you get this type of support. And most importantly, you get um, affordable, helpful access to credit. So there becomes a $30 million treasury fund. And if you uh, apply for it, once you're, within, once you're within the fellowship, an angel investor or a VC fund, or whatever it might be, would be able to pull from this fund to provide access to credit for your business to help you grow your business. And you don't take any of the risk, the investor, that's where the risk lies in the federal government. That's where the risk lies. So this is really our way of investing in startups and small businesses. This is, I mean, coming out of a pandemic, this is what makes sense because we've seen such a slump in startups over the past five, 10 years. We wanted to invest more into startups and small businesses. That takes me to the next bill, the Enhancing Entrepreneurship for the 21st Century Act. So this bill... Plain and simple, it's a study bill. It's gonna ask the Secretary of Commerce and the Secretary of, uh, sorry, the Administrator of the SBA to take a granular detailed look into why over the past 10 years, startups have been declining. The number of new businesses, the new number of new business applications has been steadily decreasing. Why is that happening? I mean, there are several ideas, but we wanna get down to a granular level to really understand what changes need to be made at the federal government level, at the state level, at the, at the local level, uh, private industry, whatever it might be, we wanna understand what's, what's going wrong here. What do we need to do to fix this? Does it take legislation? Does it take X? Does it take Y? Does it take Z? We wanna know that so that we can get back on the right trend. The good news is that actually recent Census Bureau data came out and said that during the pandemic, there was actually an increase in new business ownership. So just wanted to put that out there. That's some good news that we're hoping to see uh, continue on year after year after year. Next, the Interagency Committee on Women's Business Enterprise Act. We were able to introduce this bill last Congress and we're looking to introduce it again this, this Congress. And essentially all it is is that it puts together various agencies of the federal government, all the different ones, HHS, uh, DOD, uh, Department of State, um, SBA, Treasury, HUD, you know, various different agencies uh, all to come together and figure out a way to understand how to grow women's businesses um, that contract with the federal government. There's a lot of federal contracting opportunities. I'm sure I don't need to be the one that, that tells you that. Um, there's a lot of federal government contracting opportunities and there are quotas sometimes on how many small businesses need to be part of certain contracting. Oftentimes women, women's businesses are left out. So we want to find a way to increase women's businesses that rely on federal contracting, grow that entrepreneurial spirit within women, uh, women's businesses. Uh, we think that that would be a, a great step. Now, uh, the Promise Act, um, that is asking for the SBA to consult with various different education programs um, to develop more entrepreneurship programs within college, uh, within university, um, so that as they come out, Folks are ready to start businesses if they what they want to. You know, joining, get, getting a getting a job at nine to five might not be for some people. They might want to start businesses. This will give them the tools that they need. Um, and the last thing, support uh, startup businesses act. Um, this is just going to modify uh, some rules for for entrepreneurship growth at the SBA. So that's existing legislation that Senator Scott has introduced. Um, we're we're very proud of this work. But we're always looking for more ideas, and I think that uh, you know discussions like this are extremely, extremely helpful. So, what are we looking towards in the future? Um, we want to understand uh, COVID's impact on small business and entrepreneurship. I mean, it doesn't take uh, a rocket scientist to know that it was very, very harmful. But 
why exactly why was it harmful what wasn't in place that made it uh so difficult for start for small businesses and startups to to get going again you know even even after we reopened many states and many localities um a lot of businesses were still facing hardships we again we want to get to a real academic understanding of why this happened so that we can use that data to put into good policy um as i mentioned before we saw a growth in new business applications so um we want to encourage this there's a lot of different ideas uh our colleagues on the small business committee senator scott um you know all of us we we, we have certain ideas that we want to put into place for how we increase um small business growth and again i mean conversations like this are are extremely helpful to hear from people that are really on the ground um that can talk to us and explain to us why exactly um you know th their business might have failed or, or succeeded or whatever it might be it's, it's just it's, it is very important um and the last thing is is uh we definitely want to modernize the sba that i've been having several conversations with uh, my colleagues on the small business committee and this is one of the big ones the sba is an often overshadowed agency a lot of people don't even know it exists um pre-pandemic it really, you know, wasn't well known. They provided their 7A loans. They provided X, Y, and Z, um, but they kind of stayed in the back. COVID-19 has shined a really bright light on them. And I think that this is a golden opportunity for the SBA to, you know, really step up and find a way to encourage entrepreneurial growth, to help entrepreneurs, to give them technical assistance, to find them, you know, access to credit, um, to help minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, this is really a time for the SBA and for Congress uh, to step up, partner with private industry, private partner with, with whoever it might be to really encourage this type of growth. So, um, you know, very, you know, it, it's, it, these are still items that need to be fleshed out and we have certain ideas, but um, we're looking towards the recovery. You know, simply we're, we're looking towards the recovery. States are opening up, vaccine rollout is going very well in the country. We're hoping to get back to, you know, back to normal within the next couple of months. Um, businesses will thrive then, and we need to make sure that the federal government, state governments, local governments provide what they can and what businesses need to make sure that the economic is, environment is as ripe for growth as possible. I also uh, would be remiss if I didn't mention that Senator Scott is a co-chair along with Senator Klobuchar uh, on the Entrepreneurship Caucus. Um, we uh, plan events, we hold speaking engagements. So very similar to this, except it would be Senator Scott and he'd be much more interesting than I am um, to you know, talk about these types, of, these types of things. And so uh, you know, as we move forward in this Congress, um, we really wanna, Senator Klobuchar's office and I, um, we, we've talked about the, engaging the Entrepreneurship Caucus and engaging all of you um, to maybe come down and speak at a round table, um, you know, to, to provide your perspective, to maybe, you know, have a speaking engagement. Um, because, at, you know, at the beginning of this, um, I was talking to Aaron, actually, and, you know, coming, coming out of this pandemic, this is the exact right time to talk about entrepreneurship. This is exactly the right time. I mean, there's so many people that are turning towards self-employment. And why not? Um, you know, because we're really looking to make this work and grow it and encourage it. So, you know, the Entrepreneurship Caucus being a, being a co-chair on that, Senator Scott does not take that lightly. And we really, really want to engage with a coalition of people in South Carolina, people across the country um, to hear from you and work with you and partner with you all. Um, and just as the, the Small Business Administration, um, you know, last few things, um, there are certain tools for entrepreneurs, right? There's the SB, <clears throat> excuse me, there's the SBDCs, there's the resource partners, there's SCORE. Um, what else is needed? Uh, you know, how, how can the SBA help you? How can Congress tell the SBA what to do? And I think part of that goes along with a dual mandate. So the SBA right now, their main goal right now is, is small businesses. You know, we want to help small businesses. We want to we want to do everything we can for, for small businesses. But similarly to, for example, the Federal Reserve, right, which has a dual mandate for um, price controls and employment. I want to, you know, we're, we're interested in giving the SBA a dual mandate, not just small businesses. You can't just focus on small businesses. You also got to focus on entrepreneurship. That's why 
in Congress, the committee that we all, that, that Senator Scott sits on is the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Committee. It's not a small business committee, it's a small business and entrepreneurship committee. It's two, we gotta, we gotta make sure that the SBA understands that because they have a wealth of products, they have a wealth of knowledge um, in this space. We have to make sure that they understand that entrepreneurship is part of their mandate, part of what they need to be focusing on. Um, and, you know, again, coming out of this, entrepreneurs are going to need all the help that they can. Uh, and the SBA really, really needs to step up. And that's something that uh, I'm going to be focusing on. The Senator is going to be focusing on. And I, I know that that's something that the committee, regardless of Republican or Democrat, that we're all going to be focusing on. Um, and so, again, I, I wanted that to be very brief. I, I hope I didn't take up too much time, but um, I'd like to turn it over to, to some questions. Um, I've also put my email there. If, if anyone wants to copy that down, please feel free. My inbox is always open. Uh, happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, but yeah, so I will uh, stop talking now. I'm more than happy to, to take your questions. No, thank you. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tremendous amount going on. And we do have some questions over here already, and I'll go ahead and start with them. So Dean has said, um, has asked, um, how would participants be selected for the Next Generation Entrepreneurship Act? Yes, very, very good question. I didn't want to get bogged down too much in the details when we were originally going, just in case people mm -hmm. might not have had questions or anything. But I'm very, very glad you asked. So essentially, you would need a business plan. Uh, there's an application process. You would have to explain your, uh, you know, explain your business, explain the idea. Um, SBA will come out with criteria. We as Congress did not uh, prescribe exactly what the requirements are going to be because um, SBA really has a better understanding of the application process for businesses because they work with businesses like this often. So they'll be the ones that come out with the granular uh, details of exactly what should be in the application, but essentially, you know, just think of it, you know, sort of black and white. It'll be an application where you gotta explain your need, explain the business, explain why you want it, and yes, there will be um, provisions for making sure people in rural communities and minority communities are prioritized. Um, we 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 really want to make sure that this program is focused on those that haven't had access in the past, right? I mean. There's often those that, as I mentioned before, you know, in, in New York City or San Francisco or certain areas, right, they have access, they have the banks, they have all that, you know, at their doorstep. But a lot of the minority communities, excuse me, or rural communities in South Carolina, they just, you know, they don't have that same access. And so there is a prescriptive mandate in the bill that asks that uh, rural communities be prioritized. And th this isn't to say that, you won't be chosen if you don't live in a rural community. It's just that rural communities are asked to be a little bit more prioritized. All right, thank you. Well, along those lines, and I'm gonna interject my own question here. One of the things about rural communities is quite often there's a lot of, um, there's, there's a need for extra partnership within those rural communities to make mm -hmm. sure that you recruit folks from those rural communities. What are y'all thinking about for that? Um, so let me just, let me just make sure I, I understand. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Somebody from, um, Greenville or Spartanburg might just step up and, and apply on their own without ever, you know, discussing it with anyone, but someone from a rural community may not think that it's something for them because mm -hmm. they're from, you know, they grew up on a farm or something, right. even though they have a really great ag tech idea. Mm -hmm. So it's a, usually there's a relationship with someone in the community who will guide them Mm -hmm. you know, two opportunities like this. So how are y'all thinking about yeah. addressing that? That, that that's, a, that's a really great point. So the reason that we chose the number 320 is because there's 320 score programs um, within the SBA. And so we are tasking uh, the score programs across the country because we don't want this to just be in, you know, three out of 50 states or five or six. We want this to be across the country. We want this to, to go nationwide. So we're asking the 320 score programs to really go after these types of uh, communities. So they're the ones that are gonna be kind of going out and, and finding the right folks, you know, asking them to apply. Um, it's not gonna be, you know, just required upon an applicant to just know about this. You know, I, I understand that there's certainly a disconnect between DC and, 
any community that's not in DC, right? Like <laughs> it, 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 it's no secret that what goes on here is kind of in its own planet. So we need the partnership of people that are on the ground. Um, that just makes sense. That's logical, works for me. So we're asking the SCORE folks that are actually, you know, within the communities that actually work with the communities and know the people that are down there to kind of do a little bit of the legwork as well. We want to provide the federal backing in terms of the program and the money, but this really needs to happen at a community level. I, I mean, I just think that that is, that logically makes the most sense. All right. Well, that's very good. We have a good, strong SCORE program in, the, in our area. Excellent. Very good. So next question, uh, Steve Johnson says, actually, he's offering uh, that they have, that they studied deal flow during COVID and they have some findings. So Steve, do you want to uh, expand on that a little bit? Sure. One of the things you brought up was that uh, the number of uh, entrepreneurs, startups were, was declining. I can tell you with the uh, SC launch program, South Carolina Research Authority, we, we definitely saw a dip last year uh, and a dip coming into this year uh, significantly. It, it is now recovering. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a, a, a study of this and, and basically it came down to if you were a budding entrepreneur and you had a solid job with a corporation with benefits and a 401k and COVID came the last thing you wanted to do at that period of time was make a leap out the window. Mm -hmm. And so it was the security and the fear of where COVID was going to go because nobody knew right. a year ago where it was going. And uh, if we did, we probably wouldn't want to know. <laughs> and, and so it was a, a challenging time, but it was a time when we found that budding entrepreneurs wanted to have security they wanted to have benefits, they wanted to have insurance. And so that leap at the window was uh, really pulled back. And we're just now beginning to see that change over the last six months. Very interesting, yeah. That's really it. Yeah, no, I definitely uh, appreciate you sharing that. That's, that's very interesting. I and. I mean, it, it makes sense, um, you know, as, as I, I'm not an entrepreneur, but, you know, as someone that has, you know, I, I know several, my, my father is one, you know, it, 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 that, that certainly tracks with, with what I've been hearing. And thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Steve, thank you. And, um, and I know that it will be available, Canal, if y'all, which um, kind of brings me to the next question. Uh, just this is a kind of definitional one. When you talk about small business and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. are there specific areas that you're targeting? Do you mean industries? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know, some people think that entrepreneurship is only your high impact entrepreneurs. No. And some people think small business is only Main Street. Mm -hmm. So, and like in South Carolina, the Office of Innovation and most of their economic development money goes to those high impact businesses. Mm hmm and not to the, you know, more lifestyle. Absolutely. No, w when I'm talking about small businesses, I, I know that <laughs> I know that there is no um, exact definition of a small business. I know the SBA uses 500 employees or less, which is, you know, take it or leave it. Um, but no, when, when, I, when I refer to small business and entrepreneurship, I, I'm referring to uh, job creators. I'm referring to people that, you know, have an idea and, and go for it. Um, People that, you know, ask for that, that want the American dream and, and take that risk. Uh, that's what I'm referring to when I, when I refer to entrepreneurs, um, you know, I, 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 and I think that that's how Senator Scott views it as well. Uh, he was, he was also an entrepreneur. I'm sure many of you know, um, he had, he, he had an insurance business. He had a contracting business. Um, so he, he is well-versed in these topics. And, and when he talks about, you know, entrepreneurs, he's talking about, uh, you know, if it's, if it's one person, if, it, if it's a sole proprietorship or, or if it's a person that, you know, has, has multiple offices that started as an entrepreneur a couple, couple of years ago and, and grew their business. Um, that's, that's what, that's what he refers to. That's what I refer to people that people that take that leap, that, that risk. And, you know, um, really, I mean, it, truly it, it, it's what, and I know this is, 
often often a, a cliche term of you know small businesses are, are the backbone and all that but i mean it truly really really is um and we saw that during covid how much work they do and how much uh you know impact their community that they really have and sorry i know i'm kind of going off on the whole thing but uh you know that that's what we're referring to when we talk about small business and entrepreneurs okay all right very good and i'm glad you referred to the solopreneurs too yeah okay excellent so we have a um peter a question from peter down in um down at the coast he says, similar to the real estate opportunity zones around the U.S., has anyone looked at creating zones in underserved areas around the U.S., uh, potentially following the opportunity zones, mm -hmm. uh, that would add incentives for investing in startups and entrepreneurship, such as an entrepreneur opportunity zone? And Peter, feel free to add to this or clarify if I didn't get it quite right. Oh. Sorry, let me fix my camera there. There we go. Nope, I could not have read it better than myself, Aaron. <laughs> That's, that's a very, very interesting idea. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, I think there's certainly ideas that go around that. Um, I know Senator Klobuchar has actually uh, taken an idea from Israel um, that they used when they were trying to increase their um, sort of, what is it, uh, their, their, their tech startups. Um, and kind of, it wasn't exactly in uh, underserved areas or anything, but they, they were trying to um, create a, a, a diverse kind of venture capital system that didn't only work in Tel Aviv or something. And so Senator Klobuchar is, you know, kind of trying to figure out a way to also bring that over to the, to the United States. Um, I mean, it, it's extremely important to, to, to do something like that, because as I mentioned with the next generation uh, Bill, there's no monopoly, you know, for a state on on good ideas. They they can happen anywhere, and that's why Senator Scott is so big on uh, the access. Um, his his whole opportunity agenda is about access, and so and and you know unlocking the opportunity of you know a certain location, regardless of if it's minority, rural, urban, anything, you know, metropolitan. Everywhere has this has this potential to to you know really thrive. So um, it's, cer it's certainly something that we're looking at, but I, I, I wouldn't say that there's anything uh, tangible yet because it's, it's very hard to make sure that, you know, the funds that let's say Congress provides don't go strictly to one area or, or one other area without prescriptive mandates for it to be set aside to different, different localities. So what you're saying is it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, essentially <laughs> a long-winded way of saying that it's something that we are looking at, but yes, it's, it's complicated and, and hopefully we can find a way, um, you know, this Congress to kind of come up with a way for um, the SBA to do it. I know, you know, last Congress, there was uh, an SBA reauthorization bill um, that unfortunately didn't pass. Uh, and, and there were ideas that were, you know, kind of swirling around this. Um, but again, it, it didn't pass. And that's, you know, that, that's Congress for you. But um, we're, we're, we are working towards certain types of ideas like that. I'm available for the task force. Just let me know. Per oh, no. Uh, you know, I mean, that'd be fantastic. And, that, and, that, and, you know, that's another, that's another thing for the entrepreneurship caucus. You know, we, we, I'm sure we would love to have you come uh, and participate in a round table that we could have about, uh, you know, quote, uh, economic uh, opportunity zones or, sorry, entrepreneurial opportunity zones. You know, um, it's certainly something that we'd be more than happy to consider um, and we want to be active in the entrepreneurship caucus because, again, it's it's extremely important. There, there, there's there's hundreds of caucuses in the Senate. And all, you know, many of them don't do anything. We don't want to be that. We want to be the caucus that does something. Good. Uh, you know, along those lines, Peter, thank you for asking that question. In looking around our rural areas, one of the things that we find is very beneficial to of entrepreneur and start and grow business success is oh, sorry is mentoring be it you know expert mentoring peer mentoring coaching and we are trying to figure out how to build a, an infrastructure so that the mentors can get out to those rural areas uh, and we have the venture mentoring service from MIT here in the state mm -hmm. but it's 
you know, it's little, it se- it's much more complicated than it seems to yes. get that in place. So anything that you could do that would facilitate getting those mentors connected mm-hmm. to the entrepreneurs wherever they are, you know, because mentors may not be in the in the same location as the entrepreneurs. That would be phenomenal. Right. I I think you know one of the many lessons learned from from the pandemic is that um, you know broadband is going to be very important. Uh, in the next several years. And, you know, just because a mentor might not be in the same state as you um, should not hamper your ability to uh, receive training or technical assistance or anything like that. So, you know, I, I know that this is um, often, oftentimes when we talk about entrepreneurship, we, we leave out a very big piece, which is uh, broadband. Um, and it's, it's extremely important. We, we want to make sure that folks in rural areas uh, have access to high, high speed internet so that they can engage in business. I mean, even, even if it isn't for mentorship, e-commerce is going to be one of the biggest, you know, growing uh, ways to, to, to do business. And if you don't have that access to broadband, um, you are going to be left behind. So We've we've introduced several bills on broadband, um, and uh, you know we'll we'll see with this infrastructure package what things are looking like. But investments in broadband are, are certainly important. And I also wanted to mention one other thing with mentorship. You know, Tim, Tim Scott, Senator Scott holds mentorship with a, a you know a, a large piece of his heart is about the mentor protege um, programs, whatever it might be. He himself was an 8A protege. He had an 8A, uh, an SBA 8A program mentor. And whenever I, I, <laughs> I would, br- I bring him anything. Um, he always asks, let's find a way to get mentorship involved in this. Let's find a way to get the mentor protege, uh, involved in this. Um, just because he knows how important mentorship really, really is because you can have the access to credit. You can have the good idea, but business is tough and running, running a business and knowing how to run a business is very tough. And having a mentor that's there to help you, um, makes just the world of a difference. And so, uh, that's another thing we definitely want to make sure. I mean, we, we provided a lot of money in, in, in the various COVID stimulus bills for, for mentorship and, and the SBDCs and uh, all the different resource programs, but moving forward, we also want to take those lessons learned and put them in, in use, whether it's whether it's at the SBA, whether it's at Commerce Committee, whether it's, uh, you know, w- whatever it might be, the mentor programs uh, do provide a very good service. And, and we want to make sure that, that we encourage that. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. But, um, all right. So Katrina has asked a question and uh, Katrina is one of our Small Business Development Center representatives, and they have done a yeoman's job oh, wow. this past year working with our businesses. Mm-hmm. But she asked how much did you say the Next Gener- Act, Generation Act will pro- provide for living allowance? Sure, yeah. So um, so as, as program support, it provides, six, it, it's a two-year uh, fellowship program, and each year you get $60,000. And essentially that's, that's living expenses while you grow your business. Um, and then you also receive uh, various other, other benefits like a government-sponsored um, uh, government uh, uh, health care um, where essentially you, you, you get the same health care that, that government employees get. Um, and so there, there's various different benefits for uh, essentially just being able to focus solely on your business. And we hope to grow this. I forgot to mention this. I, it, the program starts with 320 people, but this is kind of like a pilot program. And we're hoping once we see whatever the, the faults might be in the program to fix those, but grow it out to more than 320, um, 320 individuals and you know, every year be adding more and more and more and more fellows. Excellent. Katrina, do you have anything else? Yeah, and um, does this program exist now or is this a program that you're proposing that's coming? No, uh, it's, it's a program that we introduced um, last Congress in December and we inter- re- recently reintroduced it in February of this year. We are going to try to find a way to pass this bill. Um, hopefully sometime soon, but right now it does not exist. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, SBDCs have, have done some fantastic work the past uh, past several years. So thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. That, that goes to the heart of two of the biggest barriers to entrepreneurship, having mm-hmm. the time 
Yes. Away from a paying job. Exactly. As well as healthcare. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So Lainey has a question. Um, are there any provisions to support maker spaces that operate as incubators for entrepreneurs and startups? Um, I can't say that I know exactly. Um, I apologize. I know that this is certainly something that um, is that they're looking at in the infrastructure bill. Um, however, I can't say that, you know, that's something that's going to pass or not or be included or not. Um, I just know that it's something that um, the majority uh, majority has um, indicated that they're going to be looking at. Uh, but as as of right now, there I'm sorry, there there just has there just is not that much information about it. Lainey, would you it, like ask anything? If, if you else? do have uh, you know any further questions or or would like to talk about it, I'm more than happy to. Um, just you know, uh, my my email was in in the PowerPoint. Let me know if you, you weren't able to to catch it, um, and I'll. I'm, I'm, be more than happy to give it give it again. Well, Lainey does bring up bring up a very good point about those maker spaces because quite often it is the tinkerers and the folks who don't. That's another barrier having access to the equipment. Right. Um, and we see this up here being able to make an MVP. And where do you go to find the equipment or or someone who can help with that? So excellent. All right. So another question uh, because. This is, oh, this is from Dean again. Because so much money has been needed and still is during COVID to keep things afloat across, across the country, is there concern that once COVID is under control, both health and health wise and economically, and we start talking about how to deal with the additional debt, there will not be much of an appetite to spend more money on these types of programs. And he says, meaning folks could be left on their own and no safety net after getting the initial support. This is a very good question. Um... Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, once we get COVID under control, there certainly needs to be a conversation about the federal debt, the federal deficit. I mean, we spent trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. Um, we have to we have to figure out how to pay for it. However, I, you know, I don't think that the appetite for supporting small businesses and entrepreneurs will go away. You know, I, I think the two can be mutually exclusive, sorry, mutually exclusive. Um, and I, I believe they are, you know, I, while there won't be an appetite to provide, you know, let's say PPP type loans where, um, you know, you, you get two and a half times uh, your average monthly revenue and you're able to get these forgiven, there already are conversations about, you know, how to bolster and support small businesses and entrepreneurs through loan products, um, you, know, whether, you know, you know, grants, loan products. X, Y, and Z, um, whatever it might be, um, outside of even the COVID bubble, right? I mean, I think oftentimes, recently, in, in the last few months, these two ideas kind of get conflated together of, you know, if we don't uh, spend money for COVID, then we're not spending money for small businesses. I don't, I don't buy into that. I don't, I don't think that's true. I think that um, while we definitely do have to have a reckoning over how much money that we did spend, and you know, some most of it was needed. I, I would say CARES Act, you know, the additional money for PPP after that uh, two or three times, definitely, definitely needed. We we had to do that. I mean, we saved over fifty million jobs. Um, we we st we don't even know the total number of of jobs that we saved. It's it's very high. So that was certainly needed. We do need to figure out how we are going to pay for that down the road, but. That does not uh, in any way affect that um, there, there is certainly an appetite still to make sure that small businesses have uh, what they need to succeed. succeed. And, you know, I, I think even at a higher rate, we're having these conversations um, because, as I mentioned before, the SBA was often overshadowed. You know, we, we would be talking about uh, anything else. We'd be talking about uh, banking or taxes or anything like that. And then once COVID happened, small businesses took the spotlight. I mean, they really did. And it might not, it, it was certainly not for a, a good, good reason. Small businesses were failing, but that spotlight has not gone away. Um, there, these conversations are still happening. People are still fighting to, uh, make sure small businesses have the resources they need. We're going to be at the front of that line. Um, Senator Scott's going to be fighting also. Uh, so no, I, I I don't think that the appetite will go away. I think that 
you know, two things kind of happen at once. We're going to talk about how, how do we pay for the trillions of dollars that we paid for during for COVID relief once we get back into an economically stable position. Um, but we'll also be talking about what do we need to do for small businesses? Yeah. So good. Dean, very good question. And Kunal, thank you. Dean says, excellent perspective and definitely need to separate the needs of entrepreneurs from the, the, the recovery. Absolutely. Does anybody have any additional questions? Because uh, you know me, I, I will have questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask them, but also put them in the chat. And while you're thinking, I'll ask one. Uh, so Kunal, with so many business, small, you know, privately held businesses, they, their income is passed through on tax, on their taxes. Mm -hmm. Is there, is any, is anyone looking at that and how that can be impacted by any potential tax reform? Yes. Um, so I, my, my colleague actually uh, handles the, the tax portfolio and she's okay. very, very smart in the tax world, but and so I, I can't give, you know, a very detailed answer on this, but I know for a fact that this is something that's definitely being looked at, um, the tax deductions and such for, for pass-throughs um, is, is definitely being looked at. But um, in order to get you, you know, kind of a, a more detailed uh, answer that you're certainly looking for, I'd have to take this to, to our tax counsel, who just, who knows so much more about the tax policy than me. Uh, she's very, very smart. So I, I'd be more than happy to, to ask her and and uh, get a get a better response for you. No, that that's okay. All right, but thank you, thank you. So um, let's see. When the the caucus, yes. What what's the what are y'all? What's your plan going forward? I mean, are y'all meeting every month? Are you looking mm -hmm. at coming to doing meetings around the state? How? What do you tell us about a little more of that, please? Sure. Yeah. No. So um, we before uh, COVID. Um, we held a roundtable on um, uh, women's businesses. And due to that roundtable, uh, where we had various different women entrepreneurs, we had some uh, folks from the federal government there and passing back and forth ideas about, uh, you know, different types of issues that women entrepreneurs face and so on. Senator Scott was there, Senator Klobuchar was there. Um, it was a great event. We had, we, it, was a, it was a fantastic event. But because of that, we were able to come to the um, Interagency Committee on Women's Business Enterprise Act. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the types of things that we're looking at doing at the Entrepreneurship Caucus. We don't, we don't want to have a quota on, oh, we, we want you know, one meeting a month, one meeting a month. We want to see a need and have an event that way. You know, there's a, certainly a need for um, you know, military spouse entrepreneurs. That's something that, we've, that uh, I've been hearing about a lot. So I've been talking to Senator Klobuchar's office about putting together a military spouse entrepreneurship roundtable um, and seeing how we can help there. Uh, we've been talking about various different, you know, entrepreneurship roundtable ideas that we think could actually make a difference. Um, and so that's what we're planning on doing, whether it's, you know, a speaking event or a roundtable or a Q&A, whatever it might be. Um, we don't want to just host an event to host an event. We okay. want to see a need. And we want to meet, you, you know, we, we, we want to find a solution to a problem. Um, and that's that's exactly how Senator Klobuchar's staff and I have been going back and forth on what we should be doing for uh, the Entrepreneurship Caucus. I think it, it's certainly a very powerful um, tool to have because we're able to invite all different types of people, all different types of perspectives and get kind of that diversity of thought. Um, and and that, that, I mean, that just provides us with so much. So that's what we're hoping for the caucus. Um, but again, you know, with things uh, in DC and with the Senator's schedules and all that that's going on, um, it will certainly be tough, but we really do want to kind of host these kinds of events. Well, if you ever want to host one down here, we will be more than happy. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> We'd love to host, a, host an event in South Carolina. I mean, I, that'd be, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, well, good. And um, we also, one of the things that we do see around the upstate with so many rural areas, we have a substantial number of support resources for entrepreneurs. Not only do we have SCORE, SBDC, um, and the Women's Business Center, we have multiple programs in all of the universities, but it's connecting those people who are disconnected from kind of those city centers or mm -hmm. the program centers into all of that wonderful programming and you know it's a constant challenge yeah and you know it's that 
Well, I don't know where to go for help <laughs> question. Is there right. a statement that we are regularly trying to address? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's tough. I, I think so. I'll just I'll give an example. Um, you know, the MBDA, the Minority Business Development Agency, is a, is a fantastic uh, agency within the government. Um, they, to me, what they to me what they are is is the minority SBA. Right. I mean, that, that's when often often minorities will go to the MBDA for very similar work that the SBA will go to. However, there's not that many minority business centers across the country. There's only I forget the exact number. It might be 13. But in South Carolina, there is one. It's in Columbia. So what does someone what does a minority that, you know, in South Carolina that doesn't live in Columbia, that might live in a rural area um, and he wants to he wants to utilize the MBDA resources. What does he do? What what is what does he or she do? That's a question that we're we're working towards also. So we, I mean, we introduced legislation that would allow HBCUs to uh, host minority business centers and kind of partner together, so we can reach rural areas or minority areas. These are creative answers that we need to all be looking at. You know, I unfortunately I don't I don't have an answer for you, but you know, it's something that. Again, we're trying to reckon with because oftentimes we're not in, uh, I, mean, I mean, people just aren't there. And this is somewhere where I think that, you know, um, again, broadband will, will really come into, come into use. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't, I don't need to be uh, at my doctor's office to get, uh, to have a doctor's appointment anymore. Why can't we do the same thing with um, business consulting, mm -hmm. with uh, MB, MB, uh, MB, MBDA consulting, SBA consulting? These are all, you know, creative 21st century ideas that we need to be looking at. Um, and to the extent that you all have solutions or, or ideas, I mean, we are, we are all ears, all ears. That, that's, you know, that's why I put my, my uh, email address there, because I would love to hear the ideas that you all have in terms of how do we fix these problems? Because pre-pandemic, they, they existed, but people didn't know about them. Now they exist and people know about them. So let's get them fixed. Okay. All right, good, Kanal, thank you. All right, we do have a few more questions that have come up. Let's see, uh, Dean has another question about the climate in Washington. Uh, you, you mentioned several times, worked with Senator, Senator Klubuchar's office, uh, which you think is great. We hear how everything is broken and polarized in Washington. Uh, behind the scenes at the staff level, are you all able to get beyond that climate and actually work collaboratively, like you're describing with the Entrepreneur Caucus? Yes. Um... You know that 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 uh, gridlock certainly exists, um, but I mean this kind of gets to a, a little bit more of a uh, what's the word? Uh, you know, it, there certainly gridlock exists, but at a staff level, we are all friends. I mean, you know, no, no one here holds grudges against each other or anything. We all want to work together. We all want to get things done. We all want to get our bosses on bipartisan bills, um, good bills, good ideas. Um, so. We're able to break through that. The, you know, the issue comes with the stuff further down the road, you know, the, the, the high priority, the, uh, the headline bills, right? Like a lot of the, the bills that I've been talking about, they're not going to make the headline on, you know, cable news or anything like that. That's not what's going to get, it's not what's going to grab attention. Um, those, you know, attention grabbing uh, headlines, th those are really the areas where you'll find this kind of gridlock of where we can't come together. We can't find out how to compromise but at a staff level, even even at a senator level, you know, behind the scenes, um, we're all we're all friends. We all want to work together. We all do work together where where we can, where possible, um, and we, we all want to try to see our ideas move forward. Um, that's why oftentimes you'll see, uh, you know, bills that Senator Scott has introduced. If you go to Congress.gov and, and see the bills that Senator Scott's inter introduced and click co-sponsors, you'll find oftentimes the next person there is a Democrat because. What's the point of introducing a bill that's only Republican? It's you know it's not really going to move anywhere. We want to we want to work together. We want to get uh, that bipartisanship so that we can show everyone, hey, no, this is a bipartisan bill. This is a good idea. The Democrats are on it. The Republicans are on it. Let's 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 move forward with it. Let's get it done. Um, so you know, it's it's something that often a lot of people outside of D.C. don't really see, but it certainly it's it certainly exists. And and please don't get me wrong. I mean, the gridlock certainly is there. I mean. On certain issues, we'll never be able to, uh, you know, move past those. But on issues like entrepreneurship and small business uh, support, 
we all agree. We want to help. We want to encourage this. We want to make sure this grows. We want to make sure that the entrepreneurs, uh, you know, you know, continue to gr uh, grow in America. So we will find bipartisanship there. Excellent. Well, very good. That was a good question, Dean. And Katrina says, please call the SBDC. Tell your entrepreneurs to call the SBDC because uh, and that and, and I agree with her completely because we have yeah. excellent um, advisors yeah. in our SBDCs. Definitely. Absolutely. Very good. Let's see. The speaking of the climate. So tell us a little bit about the uh, new administration and maybe some things that are that are coming down the pipe that impact entrepreneurs and business owners. Sure. Um, so uh, new, admins, new administration, I, I, I know it's April, but um, this is still technically pretty early. Um, mm -hmm. So they're still getting a lot of their transition uh, put into place. Um, so the SBA administrator was recently confirmed. Um, Secretary of Commerce was uh, confirmed last month. Um, so the, the pieces for the administration are coming together, um, and there's certainly going to be uh, some, definitely uh, some impacts for, for entrepreneurs. Um, I can't really say exactly because a lot of those decisions that they make at the administration level are behind closed doors and confidential. However, you know, I, I think at the SBA, what they're going to try to do is, um, you know, probably there's going to be a, a very big focus on uh, minority communities. Um, there's going to be a very big focus on, um, you know, making sure that uh, those communities have uh, the resources they need uh, moving forward. Um, what else? Uh, you know, I, I think that they also want to take a look at how to modernize some of their products like um, 7A. Uh, they also probably want to look at community community advantage, um, the, the, which is another uh, loan product from the SBA that they've been utilizing a lot. Um, but again, I you know I also think that a lot of what they're going to be doing for the next year is oversight, um, PPP and idle oversight. Mm -hmm. Almost, I think over yeah, over a trillion dollars was spent in uh, PVP and Idle, um, and there has to be a, a, a good amount of oversight that's done there because um, you know while a lot of jobs were saved, a lot of the money did unfortunately go to um, bad actors that should not have gotten these loans. That should have gone to um, small businesses. So um, that's probably a lot of what they're going to be focusing on at least for 2021. Um, perhaps in 2022, it'll, it'll slow down a little bit. Um, but for 2021, a lot of it is definitely going to be oversight. That's a, that's a lot of what the committee is also going to be focusing on, um, with the new, um, the new chairman, uh, chairman Cardin. Um, that's a lot of what, what they want to do as well. Well, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. That, so, okay. Excellent. Thank you. Does anyone have a final question for Kanal? And feel free to send it to me over email if you uh, if you'd like as well. Yes. Yeah, so so Justine will send out a recap by the end of the week, as well as Kunal's slides. But Kunal, y'all are very busy up there, and we are happy to help in any way we can. If you've got any questions for any of us at any time, or um, if we can provide you any data, just let us know. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, everyone, for for hopping on. Really, really do appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys gain something out of this. Um, and I'm, you know, all, again, my inbox is always open. Please feel free to email me, shoot me, shoot me an email. Uh, any questions that you guys have, I'll, you know, happy to answer. So um, hope everyone has a great, great rest of the week. Good. Good all. Thank you as well. We're getting lots of thank yous. Yes. <laughs> Good. Good to see everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you again. Lingering. Yes. <laughs> All right, I think we can sign off. We we don't need to save the the chat, do we? I save um, no because uh, I think we agreed last time that we should just do the recording and let that speak for itself. I did. I, I took a ton of notes with the Q and A, and then I thought, oh, that's right. I just don't feel. 
like I should be representing what he's saying on paper. It just doesn't feel right. So yes, I, I know. And and then right. of course, yes, I know. And then we, um, I wrote all the questions. I mean, I read all the questions. So we're good. All right. Well, it was nice to have him again. Yes. Whew, we finished a few minutes early. We had some good people on today too. 19, I think. That's a good um, interactive group. I wish they'd keep their videos on, but. I know. Yes. So, okay. All right. Well, I have had three people try to reach me. So Talk I'll to you later. Yes, I know. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. See ya. Bye.